Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jalen, and yesterday I just got back from New York City. I was on a work trip in Philly for one day, and my work trip ended a little bit early. I was planning to go to New York for two days, but then I got in the night before I was planning to. So I had a little bit more than two days in New York City. I was by myself. I haven't been to New York since I was 19 years old, and so I've been very excited to go back and look at bookstores, be able to drink in New York City, just eat my way around the city and see what I find. And I had a fucking blast. I want to move to New York City immediately. Like, it was incredible. But yeah, I went to, I think, I would say, I think like 10 bookstores, maybe. Maybe not that many, but it was a lot. I went to almost all of them that were on my list, and I ended up buying 17 books. And I tried to stick to only paperbacks. Actually, I did only stick to paperbacks and some used, some new, but no hardcovers because I didn't really have space. All I had was a backpack and a carry-on. And so I wanted to just quickly kind of go through all the books that I hauled, why I picked them up. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to put in some montage footage of my trip to New York. I intended this to be like a vlog style video. But as you may know, if you watch my channel, vlogging does not come naturally to me <laughs> in terms of actually talking to the camera and explain what I'm doing. I just go, 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 especially on this trip when I was in my hotel room only to sleep. And I woke up, quickly got ready and just left and explored New York. So yeah, let's get into the 17 books that I purchased in New York City. First up, I have It Came From The Closet, Queer Reflections on Horror edited by Joe Valese. Valise. This is out from Feminist Press. I've been super excited for this book for so long. This book is a compilation of essays, so it's 25 contemporary queer and trans writers reflect on the horror films that shaped them and shook them, from Hitchcock to Halloween to Hereditary. And I love horror films. I love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday. And so to have queer essays on a bunch of different, you know, very huge staples of horror and to see how those films impacted queer people through these essays, I am so excited for this. It's a perfect read for Halloween. I'm going to start this tonight after I finish this video and I can't wait to read it. So yeah, this is out now from Feminist Press if you're interested in some queer nonfiction essay writing about horror films. I'm super hyped for it. If I didn't mention I got that from The Strand. And then the next two I picked up from McNally Jackson. I got two of their McNally edition books. They are printed on these really cool paperbacks with like a flap. It comes off and it's only like part of the, how do I explain this? Let me take it off and you'll see what I mean. So the paperback is simply just a color and then it has the flap with the art on it. So this one is Daddy's Gone a Hunting by Penelope Mortimer. So this one is about a suburban housewife who is paralyzed by triviality, measuring out her days in coffee mornings, glasses of sherry, and bridge parties, routines that barely disturb the solitude of her existence. Her husband spends his weeknights in town and their daughter, 18-year-old Angela, is at Oxford and their sons are at boarding school. Then Angela, the daughter, accidentally falls pregnant and Ruth must keep her own past from repeating itself. So it's about domesticity and her trying to prevent her daughter from suffering a similar boring unfulfilling future i guess so this one is also a mcnally edition it's called they by k dick and this one is a dystopian book i think this was published in the 70s penelope mortimer one i think it was published in the 60s piece of dystopian fiction about a bunch of violent gangs that roam the country destroying artworks and literature and brutalizing those who resist the purge as the menacing they creep ever closer a loosely connected band of dissidents attempts to evade the chilling mob but it's only a matter of time until their luck runs out so my understanding is that mcnally editions are trying to reissue books that are sort of lost classics. I'm, I'm excited for both of these. I think more so Daddy's Gonna Hunting, but I wanted to get They as well for a potential Halloween slim read. So these will be read soon by me. Next up, I have Girl with Curious Hair by David Foster Wallace. I picked this one up from East Village Books. And this one is a book that came recommended to me by Tess Gunty, author of The Rabbit Hutch, who was a friend of the podcast and was on very recently and also was just shortlisted for the National Book Award. She said that the first story in this collection called Little expressionless animals is like his perfect piece of fiction i had asked her about starting infinite jest and if she had any tips for me in terms of how to conquer it and she said maybe start with that story and i was actually at book club a bar in east village which has a bookstore in it and also beer and wine and i started this because it was the only book i had on me and i got halfway through that story but i had to stop because it was quite dense it was really good but it was so odd and it's like sparse telling and jumping around in time and many characters and I was like you know let me come back to this when I'm not like running around the city so excited for this excited to get into some David Foster Wallace 
And shout out Tess Gunty for giving me a recommendation that I found in New York. Next up, I got this one from Book Culture. It is What Belongs to You by Garth Greenwell. I really liked his second book, Cleanness, which was published in 2020. And this is his debut, which follows an American teacher in a public bathroom, also in Sofia, Bulgaria. And he meets Mitko, a charismatic young hustler, and pays him for sex. So I think this is going to have a lot of like the queer sex writing that was in Cleanness in a different setup. So I'm very excited to read some more Garth Greenwell. Type for it. Next up, I have James Purdy in A Shallow Grave. I forget who recommended this to me on Instagram, so I apologize. But also I saw one of my favorite current writers, Paul Della Rosa, posted a book of his that he owns. That's kind of like a rare edition. And so I wanted to read James Purdy because I heard that he's like queer and gothic and dark and sort of underread generally. I think his books are hard to find now. He's kind of like an eBay author. And so I found this one at Unnameable Books in Brooklyn, which was awesome. And I don't know what this is about. I just heard it's queer and dark. I picked it up because it was a rare find. So that is some James Purdy. If you've read him, let me know. Next up is The Unpossessed by Tess Schlesinger. I'm trying not to buy any more New York Review of Books books until I tackle the many that I've picked up over the years because I partake in the... I think like quarterly or semi-annual 40% off New York Review of Books sale. And this one, Brandon Taylor, my king, he recommended this to me when I was asking for some book recommendations based on my favorite shelf. And he said, I think you'll like Tess. So I tried to find her in every bookstore that I went to and I finally found a used copy of hers in book culture. So I don't know what it's about, but we will see. I think it's sort of like DWM, but in like the 30s. New York intellectual, I don't know, sounds interesting. Next up, I found The Dominant Animal by Catherine Scanlon, also at Unnameable Books. I am currently reading her book, Kick the Latch, which was just published by New Directions, and I'm loving it. I actually started it right before I left for this trip to New York, but then I didn't want to bring any books with me because I knew this was going to happen. So I need to just restart it because it's a very slim little novella. But I saw this story collection of hers in Unnameable Books, and so I had to pick it up. My understanding is that she writes really slim accounts, so in this book it's short stories that are quite dark and visceral. Sounds good, and I love her writing so far in Kick the Latch, so I'm excited for this too. Next up, this is a book that's been on my radar for a while. It's Will and Testament by Vigdis Jorth, I think is how you say her name. I currently have Is Mother Dead on like my immediate TBR, which just came out from Verso Books. But this is one that I've had on my TBR for a while. I just never found a copy of it, and I saw it. Um, I love the Verso Books covers. This one is great. I love like a dark, woodsy, sort of ominous cover like this. But my understanding is it's about a family drama, four siblings, two summer houses, one terrible secret, and a dispute over a will. I took a will and uh, trust class in law school, so it is of interest to me and also sounds like drama and juiciness. So we will see. Next up, I have A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood. I think if I recall correctly, Alex from A Page You On, CJ Reads, they both really liked this book. It's about 1960s suburban Southern California professor. He's gay, middle-aged, and adjusting to solitude after the tragic death of his young partner. So it's about grief and about a queer man in middle age. And then also Pato, who is blowing up on booktube right now. They are an incredible creator. I'm obsessed with their content. Pato is so kind. And then when I also asked for recommendations, they suggested this book and they said that they couldn't stop thinking about it ever after finishing it. And so I'm very excited. So thank you, Pato, for recommending this. And I found a used copy at Unnameable Books as well. Next up at The Strand, I found Aspects of the Novel by E.M. Forster. I think this is like a seminal piece of literary criticism. I don't know when it was published, but I also haven't read E.M. Forster, his fiction. But this one says it's about the author freely examines aspects all English language novels have in common. Story, people, plot, fantasy, prophecy, pattern, and rhythm. Forster's delightful treatment gives the reader a profound appreciation for both the novel and the author's own formidable talents. Next up is the debut novel of an author I've been really wanting to read. It's A Minor Chorus by Billy Ray Belcourt. So I think this one is a piece of autofiction about a queer indigenous doctoral student steps away from his dissertation to write a novel informed by a series of poignant encounters. So yeah, I think it's about the act of writing. I just really wanted to read Billy Ray Belcourt, and I believe he's a poet primarily. Yeah, the author of three books of poetry and nonfiction. He lives in Vancouver. So I'm hyped for this, and I also really love this cover. Next up at Mast Books in East Village, I bought I Am the Brother of XX by Floor Yegi, a short story collection that sounds right up my alley. I think I saw someone reading this or this author recently, and I 
looks her up and then I've been wanting to read her. I don't remember who, not very specific, but this says, Flor Yegi is often noted for her terse and telegraphic style, which brews up a haunting paradox. And then a critic says, how work could be so chilly and so passionate at the same time as a puzzle, but that icy hot quality is one of its distinctions. I'm hoping this is kind of like Laura Vandenberg in style, so we'll see. It's a very slim little collection. Let me know if you've read Flor Yegi. Next up is what I understand to be a piece of metafiction that just came out by Lucy Ives. It's Life is Everywhere a novel. This one is about a grad student in Manhattan in 2014, and she's locked out of her house, and she has two manuscripts that she's written in her bag, going to the library, along with a monograph by a faculty member who's recently become embroiled in a bizarre scandal. And I guess within these documents is a key that she needed all along. So I think she reads something and then crafts the book that we're reading as it goes along. And it's very dense. It's a big book. I saw some really rave reviews of this recently on Twitter and on the internet, just like vague high praise for Lucy Ives. And I've been wanting to read her short stories, namely her collection called Cosmogony. So I picked this up from Books Are Magic in Brooklyn. Next, I have The Emigrants by W.G. Zabald, I think is how you say his name. This one was recommended to me by Anna Hoagland, author of The Long Answer, who was recently on the podcast as well. And I loved her novel, it's a debut novel which is told from the perspective of a narrator named Anna, and she's being told other stories from other women about parenthood, motherhood, abortion, miscarriage, etc. And she said in the interview that she was very directly inspired by the emigrants and suggested it to me. I found this at Blue Stockings, which is like a radical queer bookstore, which is really cool. So yeah, I found this. Let me know if you read Sebald as well. I think I'm gonna like him, but I'm just not familiar with his work. But I love these covers from New Directions. And I think they have two or three other books of his that were recently reissued in this style. So if I like this one, I'm gonna collect the rest. Oh, and I also got the Billy Ray Belcourt book from Blue Stockings as well. And the last two were both from The Strand as well. I have Desperate Characters by Paula Fox. And the one reason why I bought this is because it's one of Jonathan Franzen's favorite books. His blurb is on here. It's been mentioned in some of his essays as well. I read his essay collection called How to Be Alone, and he wrote about this book there. It's on his list online of like favorite books, so I want to read it. Otto and Sophie Bentwood live in a changing neighborhood in Brooklyn. Their stainless steel kitchen is newly installed and their Mercedes is parked curbside. After Sophie is bitten on the hand while trying to feed a stray, perhaps rabies infested cat, a series of small and ominous disasters begin to plague the Bentwoods' lives, revealing the fault lines and fractures in a marriage and a society, wrenching itself apart. So we all know that I think that Jonathan Franzen is a master of the family drama, and so I'm very curious to see how this book has inspired his work as well. So that's Desperate Characters by Paula Fox. And the last book is a book that I forgot that I was looking for and very interested in. I didn't know it had been published already, but it came out in early September and I'm so stoked for it. I'm gonna read this one in next, I think, for fiction. And it's Tonio the Infallible by Avelio Rosero, translated by Victor Meadowcroft and Anne McLean. This one is out from New Directions. And so this one is like a literary horror novel. It says, the first line is, I was alone when someone pounded on my door. Who could it be? So begins Tonio the Infallible, a gripping novel about an intense relationship between a writer and a sociopath. That's all I want to read in fiction. <laughs> it's about writers, about horror, about a sociopath, a, a mystery that sounds creepy as hell. And also this demonic cover is stunning, gorgeous. Can't wait to read it. So if anyone would like to join me in reading this next, this will be my next fiction book, I think. So those are the 17 books that I picked up in New York. I will now include some footage from New York and I hope you enjoy it. I apologize for not making it a proper vlog, but you know how it goes on the channel. I am a sit down lad, so that's that. Yeah, I hope to go back to New York soon. If you have any recommendations for New York, if you don't follow me on Instagram and weren't aware of me doing this trip, but you have like for future recommendations, I wanna keep a list going of like other things I need to do. Ate a lot of food, explored a lot of New York, and it was so fun. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the book haul and I will catch you all in the next one. Bye. <laughs> Best cookie of my life. Oh my god. Oh.